Hello there and welcome to today's video. I'm happy to say there's some exciting news for Clip Studio Paint users. Version 2.0 is finally here. That means multiple new features and settings for artists to take advantage of. Today, I'll be giving my thoughts and recommendations for some of my favorite new features from 2.0 for both illustration and webcomic creation. Links and tutorials, as well as everything referenced in this video, will be down in the description below. To start, let's go over a few new features you can use for illustration. One of the best things about Clip Studio Paint to me is its ability to recreate the feeling of using traditional art supplies. I've always found that one of the biggest hurdles for traditional artists wanting to get into digital art is having to learn a new understanding of color mixing. When painting with real paint, mixing pigments together is essential for making new colors. If you've ever taken an art class before, you'll know that all colors are just combinations of the primary colors, red, blue, and yellow, plus black and white for value. If I wanted to create green paint, it'd be as simple as mixing together blue and yellow paint. However, when painting digitally, this is not the case. The primary colors of digital painting are a little different. Red, green, and blue for RGB, and cyan, magenta, yellow, and black for CMYK. And the way the colors interact is different too. As you can see here, when I try to blend blue and yellow together on my canvas, it doesn't create green like you might expect when using real paint. Instead, it simply pushes the colors around each other, and it creates a muddy gray color instead. It can take a lot of time and practice for digital artists to learn to work around this limitation. However, as of Clip Studio Paint's 2.0 version update, we now have the choice to switch between standard color mixing and perceptual mixing. As the name suggests, perceptual mixing mimics the way we've learned to mix real pigments. By switching a brush with color mixing enabled over to perceptual mixing in the subtool detail panel, now it'll behave like traditional paints do. So in this example, I can pick the same blue and yellow from earlier to mix, and as you can see, this time they'll create green. To switch back to regular digital mixing, just go to the same color mixing dropdown as before and set it to standard. I think this is an amazing setting to help traditional artists transition into working with digital art, or for digital artists who are looking to bridge the gap between the two mediums. What's extra convenient is that this setting is a simple toggle switch, so you can add it to your tool properties panel and turn it on and off when needed. One of the coolest and most unique new features to 2.0 is the Shading Assist tool. Sometimes it can be hard to pinpoint where to place your lighting and shadows on a line art drawing, especially when the drawing is very detailed. By using the Shading Assist tool, you can simulate a light source and plot out where you want your lights and shadows to go. Everything from the light color to the blending mode can be adjusted, and you can swap between a directional light and a ball of light as the source. I've been enjoying using this to plan out my thumbnail sketches for my illustrations. Rather than spending a lot of time manually drawing out the lights and shadows myself, I can simply turn this on and fiddle with the lighting until I decide where I want it to go and what colors to use. Then I can go in and draw it myself on the final illustration. I think beginning artists will find this tool really useful for giving them a foundation to work from if they're still learning about lighting placement. Additionally, a recent change to the Liquify brush tool now allows it to be used on multiple layers at once. This is a huge help when you want to make last minute changes to your line art and colors at the same time. I personally like to group the layers together in folders before liquefying them to keep it all organized, but you can also just select them all for the same result. Now let's move on to some new features you can use for webcomic creation. First up are the new 3D tools. A feature I've been extremely excited for is the new adjustable 3D head model. Once you've added the model to your canvas, you can adjust these sliders to change their proportions. Then go into the individual facial feature settings to tweak them further. I think this is an especially good tool for comic artists who want to draw multiple types of characters quickly and repeatedly. It only takes a few seconds to make the head look like an elderly person, a small child, or a muscular man. 
so scenes with multiple characters become much faster to draw this way. A practice I've been finding really helpful is to import some art of your characters, then adjust the head model till it matches their proportions. Then you can save the head model as a preset, and you'll always have that character's head ready to drop onto your canvas. I've done this with the main characters of both of my comics, and I find that even characters with really stylized and non-realistic proportions can be made this way with relative accuracy. This is a big help in drawing some of my more stylized characters from unique angles that I might have avoided before. Moving on from the head model, there are also some new 3D background tools I've been finding very useful too. The Distant Fog feature is a really good way to add some atmospheric depth to your backgrounds. If you've ever looked at a photo of a forest or mountain, you might have noticed that the objects farthest in the background look a lot lighter and blend in with the sky more. This phenomenon is called atmospheric perspective or depth. For one of my comics, I frequently use this model of a graveyard from the asset store. Adding in some atmospheric fog really lends itself to the creepy atmosphere I'm going for. But even if you're drawing somewhere less creepy, using this in your art is a really simple way to convey distance in your backgrounds, so having an adjustable tool that automatically adds it is a massive help. One final 3D feature I've been using for my comics lately is the 3D drawing figure layer option which you can find under the layer menu. Essentially, it allows you to quickly add in a posed body model right to your canvas in just a few clicks, rather than having to manually drag in models and poses one by one. When trying to make crowded scenes or conversations between multiple characters, this can be a big time saver. I've also added this tool to my quick access panel to save myself more time. Moving on to the comic formatting tools, the Change Canvas Height feature is incredibly useful for anyone working on vertical comics. Before, if you wanted to add or remove additional space to your comic, you'd have to change the canvas dimensions, which limited you to only extending or cropping the top or bottom of the canvas, so you were out of luck if you wanted to add or remove any space in the middle. But now, you can simply drag this masked section and adjust it to the size you want and it'll add or remove that space depending on your selection. I tend to go back and adjust the spacing of my vertical comic pages many times over the course of my workflow, so having a way to do this easily has been a big benefit for me. The new Align and Distribute panel adds in some tools to further adjust the placement of things on your canvas. For example, if I've got a few text bubbles that I'd like to arrange so they're all centered on my canvas, all I have to do is make sure they're all selected, then click this box to automatically move them where they need to go. Sometimes if you're working at unusual dimensions, it can be hard to find the center line of your canvas even when you use a grid, so having a tool that'll do this for you makes the process a lot easier. This is also helpful for creating and arranging pattern designs and for formatting text boxes for things like character sheets, as you can snap things to a variety of axes depending on your needs. Lastly, the text tools have received a bunch of new additions too. The ability to wrap text has been a long-awaited feature for me, since before I'd have to format each line individually if I was writing out a paragraph. This is especially appreciated for comic text bubbles, where maintaining good spacing is key to keeping things easily readable. Now I can just choose the perimeter of a text box, in this case a text bubble, and my text will automatically format itself to fit inside. Those are just a few of the many new features arriving with Clip Studio Paint version 2.0. Check the description below for my social media links and more tutorials. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time.